Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am back with a video that I literally just thought about last night when I was lying in my bed thinking about books that I really wanted to focus on and read this year. And I don't really know what to call it. So in my head, I'm gonna call it physical paperbacks that I want to read in 2021. So we are obviously now approaching the middle of the year, which I still can't get my head around. And I've had a really good reading year so far and I'm really happy with the things that I've read and I haven't really read that many like rubbish books but I am aware in the back of my head that there are books that I want to continue reading. I've got a couple of series that I wanted to sit and speak to you about and then some other standalones and like authors in general. So currently I'm really into exploring different authors and trying things that aren't necessarily in my comfort zone. So, so I read Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. I did a book talk on that, so that's sort of like a children's fiction. And then I have been reading a little bit of historical fiction this year, which I have never branched out to before. So I'm trying different genres, I'm trying different authors. And because of that, I'm also not having as much time, obviously having two children and everything opening back up again and work and all of that. I don't have that much time to read. Obviously I am still reading sort of two or three books a month, but I'm not prioritising authors that I've already got on my shelf, if that makes sense. Maybe like three or four years ago I would have sat and read like two Cara Matthews in one month, whereas now I'd be lucky to read two of hers a year, which is crazy. Um, so I've got a couple of books that I really want to focus on this year. I'm going to start off with one that I don't actually know much about and that is In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. This is what it looks like. Um, this was actually sent to me by my friend Rosie. Um, she sent me a couple of books. One of them was a book club pick. I can't remember the name of it. It was by Sophie Cousins. this time next year or something. Someone with the white cover, main guy's called Quinn. Can't remember the name of it. Um, this is just one, it's very, very short, which is why I want to read it. It's just, it's a standalone author. I don't have anything else by her. So I really just want to read it and obviously pass on to someone else that will love it as well. I don't know if I like it, hopefully I will. Um, it's been referenced by Beth O'Leary, didn't like her. Josie Silver liked her and Jill Mansell. I haven't read a Jill Mansell in years. Um, Danny Cohen has held true to her meticulous crafted five year plan since she understood the concept. On the day she nails the most important interview of her career and gets engaged to a perfect man. She's well on the way to fulfilling her life goals. But that night, Danny falls asleep and dreams of dreams a night of five years in the future where she's engaged to another man. It was just a dream, she tells herself when she wakes, but it felt so real. Determined to ignore the odd experience, she files it away in the back of her mind. That is until five years later when Danny meets the man from her dream. So it sounds really good. It is only, I think it's 251 pages. So I'll be able to read it really quickly and I just want to read it and sort of see how I find that one. So that's one that I really want to focus on. Uh, next, what should I talk about next? I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about a series that I started, Jesus, 2017, so that's four years ago. And that is the I Heart series by Lindsay Kelk. I loved book one. I don't know what it was, I just found it so, I think it was written in like 2007, eight, maybe nine. Um, and it's about a girl, what's her name? Angela, and she, something happens on someone's wedding day, I think it's like her best friend's wedding day, she finds out her partner's cheating on her with the bride. And so she just flees to New York and creates a life for herself and she starts a blog and I just absolutely loved it. And then I read Hollywood, which was the next one, and it wasn't as like captivating as the first, but it was still really interesting. Um, and then Paris, I read Paris, which is book three. I think it was two years ago now. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Like I absolutely hated it. And it's put me off continuing with the series. This is, 
I want to say it's like a seven or eight book series. She finished it at Christmas and then she then went back into it with Hawaii. Um, I just don't know. I think this one's the next one. Is it this one or London? No, it is this one next. Um, I just really want to finish the series. Um, it's been something that I obviously started four years ago and I just really want to continue with it. I don't think I'm going to finish the whole series this year. We've only got six months and there's still so many books that I've got to read. But if I can just gradually start chipping away, I'd be happy if I just read this one book. It's not massive, it's what, just over 300 pages? 325, so it's not massive. Um, but yeah, I, I really need to prioritise this one. Another one I need to prioritise, I may as well get this series out of the way as well, is one that I started doing book reviews on my channel for because I absolutely loved the first book. And again, as time went on, the characters started to grate on me and I got um, disinterested and I also found it to be completely ridiculous. And I think, I don't know, this is aimed at, I would say, my demographic, but I just feel like it, it is aimed at a younger reader because it is so, um, what's the word? Just so unrealistic. Um, so this is the fourth book in the Shopaholic series. Um, I've done book talks for all the other three. If you've read this series and you want to know my thoughts. I think I read the last one. I honestly couldn't even tell you. I think it was towards the end of the summer and I've just been putting off reading it. I don't know why. This is Shopaholic and a Sister. Um, all I know is that the end of book three, it, they got married and they were going to go on their honeymoon. And I know that there was a small book in the middle that's not even like a, a book, I don't think. I think it's just like an e-book, uh, which was like a honeymoon one. And then it jumps to this. And I really wanted that extra depth that we needed for the honeymoon, which is why I haven't picked this one up yet. I will pick it up. Like I said, this is book four. A sister, a soulmate, a skin flint. I've got no idea what that means. Um, again, I don't really know what happens in this one. I don't want to read the blurb because I'd rather go into it unknowing. Um, but yeah, I do really need to continue with the Shopaholic series. I get questions about it all the time in my DMs, being like, oh, have you read it? Are you going to do a book talk? I haven't read it yet. Um, but I will. That's one that I'm aware of. And I think I've got this one on my Kindle, which will probably spur me on to read it because um, I prefer reading on my Kindle as opposed to paperbacks. Um, although this is a floppy one and I love a floppy paperback. So I need to continue with that one. A standalone that I really want to read. I had it as a book club pick. Was it last year? And I never read it and I really wanted to, but I just didn't do it. So I might make it a book club pick again this year because I don't, last towards, well last year in general, towards the end of last year, I wasn't necessarily into my book club as much. Um, whereas this year I've been really consistent and I'm really happy with it. And obviously this is why it spurred me on to do my book videos. Um, and that is Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I loved normal people. I didn't like the book when I first tried to read it because I found her writing style, as amazing as it is, I found it really difficult to get into. I'd never read anything like it before. Um, having the visual of the TV show, which is one of my favourite things I've ever watched in my life. I don't know why it was so special. It just really hit a, heart, a hole in my heart. And then I went to them read the book and I just fucking loved it. And I would recommend it to anyone. Sally Rooney's writing is just, she's my age. She's, I think she's 28. Um, it's just incredible. Like the feelings and the emotions in a relatively small book. It's just next to none. Um, and she's got a new book coming out. I think it's September. And if that's the paperback, I might make that a book club pick later on in the year. Um, so yeah, this is Conversations with Friends. Because of how popular Normal People was on the BBC, it's been commissioned to do this as a, as a series. Again, I think it's in collaboration with Hulu. I'm not 100% sure, I don't really follow it that closely, but they've just cast the, um, the book, the characters in this book. And 
now that I have the visual of what they're going to look like, I really want to read this before it comes out. I don't know if any dates and stuff have been released. I don't think it'll come out this year. It'll probably come out, I think normal people came out, was it April 2020? So maybe April 22. Uh, oh my God, that makes me feel so old. Um, so yeah, I just really want to give this a read. Um, this is, I'll read the blurb for this one. Francis is 21 years old, called cool-headed and observant, a student in Dublin and an aspiring writer. At night she performs spoken words with her best friend Bobby, who used to be her girlfriend. When they are interviewed and they and then befriend when they are interviewed and then befriended by Melissa, a well-known journalist who is married to Nick, who is being played by Taylor Swift's boyfriend, um, an actor, they enter a world of beautiful houses that's a word I don't know how to pronounce. Racocious? R-A-U-C-O-U-S. That just looks like couscous to me, so let's just continue. I'm not very good at reading out loud, I don't know if you've noticed that. Dinner parties and a holiday in Brittany. Beginning a complex menage a Again, let's just skip past that. But when Francis and Nick get unexpectedly closer, the sharply witty and emotion adverse, Francis is forced to be, is forced to honestly confront her own vulnerabilities for the first time. Does anyone know what I've actually just read? Because that just went straight over my head because I didn't know how to pronounce some of the words. Um, I just think it's gonna be amazing. I don't know if it's done in different POVs. I just really wanna bloody read the book, so. Um, Sally Rooney's conversation with friends is on the list. I'll need to prioritise that. What else should I talk about? Okay, I've got four books in a series. When I show you these books, this is me showing you it's being a, like a representation of the author. I need to prioritise Lucy Diamond, which spurs me, which has spurred me on, I should say, for this to be a book club pick for the month of May. I think this is going to go up in May. Again, I don't know what videos I've got pre-filmed because I'm just filming them as and when I want. Um, I'm hoping this will go up so you can still get involved with this if you want. I think this was her release last year. Yes. Um, and it's an almost perfect holiday for everyone longing to get for everyone longing to get away from it all. This book's for you, and I just I need that. It's um, thing is a pure escapism. Again, I need is. And this says, down in Cornwall, the sun is shining and Lorna's three holiday cottages are fully booked. M is in the first one with her blended family. Fingers crossed they're still together by the end of the fortnight. Maggie's next door with her bolshy teenage daughter, hoping that some sea air and sunshine will reunite them. And then Olivia arrives in need of sanctuary, only to be confronted with the memories from the past and secrets that have been buried for far too long. Everyone longs for a sunny escape, but will this summer holiday be too hot to handle? I really enjoy Lucy Diamond. I've read a couple of her books. I own all of them. I think I have like 14 on my shelf, which I know is ridiculous when I've only read like two. Um, or have I read three? I can't remember. Um, but the ones I did read, I really enjoyed, which is why back in the day when I used to be obsessed with buying books, I ended up scouting them all out. Um, in charity shops. I just really need to focus, like I said at the start of the video, on authors that I've already got on my shelf. Not picking up one of these in a couple of years, that's not, that, that shouldn't be happening. I should be able to prioritise one of these. So, Lucy Diamond, this is our book club pick for May, um, and her, just her books in general, I need to read more of. Another one that I haven't picked up in a very long time is Heidi Swain. Again, I stopped collecting her books because it got to the point where if I had too many, I knew I wouldn't read them. And I'm currently at that point now. With Heidi Swain, one of my friends on my book club called Katie, she loves Heidi Swain. She loves all of her books. She's up to date with everything that she's read. Um, everything that she's written, sorry. And the reason why I haven't gotten into Heidi Swain, I've read her first book and I really enjoyed it. That was called The Cherry Tree Cafe. It's just a, I call it a fluffy book. It's one that you don't need to concentrate too much on. Um, there's slight drama, slight twists and turns, but nothing that's like 
hitting you in the heart. It's very, it's, it's a forgettable, fluffy book. Sometimes it's just what you need, and you need. Sometimes that's that's what people really enjoy reading. I like things that like make me gasp and stick with me. Whereas things like this, that might be for someone else. This for me is like a little hug in a book. It's just something that you want on a rainy day. You don't really need to concentrate on, but it's just a nice fluffy read and everything gets wrapped up really nicely. Whereas some of my books, it's a bit more gritty, if that makes sense. So this is Summer at Skylark Farm. Um, Heidi Swain, I don't know, because obviously I haven't read any more, and I spoke to Katie about it before. You have to write, read her books in publication order. I don't know if they're all taking place in the same village, or it's the same sort of area, um, and obviously if there's Christmas books written by Heidi Swain that I really want to read, but I have to read this one before I can get onto some Christmas books, and that really puts me off. If I want to read a book, I want to read. I want to read that book. I don't want to have to read this first. And this doesn't even sound like a bad book. It's just my brain rebelling, being like, "No, you want to read that Christmas book. You read that Christmas book." But then the other side of me is like, "I don't want to get spoiled." It's a never-ending battle in my brain. Um, so I really want to prioritise reading this one in particular because I think the next one is a Christmas book that I can then read in December so I've still got like four or five months to which again is mental to just get this one it's 460 odd pages so again a little bit chunkier I should be able to get it done in like a week or so um, and I'll read the blurb for you again Amber is the city girl at heart so when boyfriend Jake Somerville suggests that they move to the countryside to help out at his family farm she doesn't quite know how to react but work has been hectic and she needs a break so she decides to grasp at the opportunity dreaming of organic orchards paddling in streams and frolicking in the fields I'm sorry who frolics in the field adults don't do that dogs do that this is what puts me off Amber packs up her things and moves to Skylark Farm. But life is not quite how she imagined it. It's cold and dirty and the farm buildings are dilapidated and crumbling. Even so, Amber is determined to make the best of it and she throws herself into farm life. But can she really fit in here? And can she and Jake stay together when they are so different? Like, that does sound really good. I just don't know why I haven't read it. I'll read this in the summer. That's gonna be my goal. Pee on summer holidays, after my surgery, I want to read this because it sounds like a nice like summery book and then I can then read the Christmas one. If you've read a Heidi Swain, let me know. Okay, um, another one that I just grabbed to represent the author is Millie Johnson. Now, I have read a Millie Johnson, oh God, I can't get my words out, a Millie Johnson recently. I say recently. Was it Christmas 2019 or 2020? I don't know. I read A Winter Flame. Is that what it's called? A Winter's Flame? Again, does Jessie own all of the Millie Johnson books? Yes, she does. How many Millie Johnsons have I read? Two. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It was my book buying obsession that I had. Oh god, this headband hurts my ears. Um, I'm not sure about this situ, by the way. I need to wash my hair, and I was like, I'm just going to shove it up. So apologies if I look a little bit odd. Um, I really enjoyed her books that I read, and I was like, I just, I just need more. That I just need more. They're all in the charity shop. It's like 50p. I, I just need them. And I've only read two. And the pressure that I have mentally, like you really need to pick up some slack and read some more. Is real. So this is the magnificent Mrs. Mayhew. I'm not going to read the blurb, but this is just a representation, like I said, to read some more Millie Johnstons. The one I read was Winter of the Flame and I read the seasonal ones, A Summer Fling and A Winter Flame. I've got all the other ones, I think. Yes, I have. Um, apart from, oh no, I do have them all. I found one in the charity shop the other day um, and I got it the north one was the one that I got recently um let me know which one you think I should read next she was going to be my May book club pick but I just really wanted to um to pick the Lucy Diamond so 
let me know your favourite Millie Johnston and that will go straight to my top of my list. Um, I was going to pick the Yorkshire Pudding Club but that was about pregnancy and I don't really want to read about pregnancy right now. Um, so yeah, let me know your favourite and again that will go straight to the top of my list. Then I've got my series that I really want to finish this year. I've spoken about this before, this is a spin-off series to the Vampire Academy series that I absolutely, oh, I can't put the words out, absolutely demolished in 2016, I think it was. It was when P was, was a baby um, and I smashed it. I absolutely loved Vampire Academy uh, and it sounds awful and the covers, the old covers are awful as are the ones that I'm now about to show you. But they were so good. They're so action packed. They're not cheesy. It's about friendship and uh, like fighting bad vampires. And it's nothing like Twilight. And I feel like vampire books get really bad rep because of how bad Twilight, in my opinion, how bad and cringy Twilight was. And it wasn't like that at all. And I loved the characters and I loved like like I said the action scenes and and within the Vampire Academy books you go all over the place and it was so interesting and people getting turned into they're called Strigoi which is like the bad vampires um that want to kill each other whereas you've got other ones that are good Maroi um if you've read the Vampire Academy series let me know so I started the spin-off which is called Bloodlines I started that I want to say I was pregnant with Florence so 2019 and then a couple of months ago this year I read The Golden Lily which was the second one so it took me a really long time to get back into it even though I loved the first one. Now I'm sort of back into it. I really, if I can, I want to smash off the rest of the series because I've had it on my shelf for a really long time and they are amazing books and these are the types of books that I do even though I haven't but when I did Vampire Academy I'd quite like to do it back to back. Um, because the world is so immersive and there's so much going on. Um, so that is, like I said, the Bloodlines series. So let's not judge a book by a cover because these are fucking awful. What is this? I, it just gets worse. Like I just can't, how has that been approved by the author? I just, this is the 2007 book cover if I ever saw one in my life. I don't even know when this came out, just have a quick look. I'm going to be very disappointed if it's later than that. 2013, she had this cover in 2013, I, I cannot. Anyway, so this follows, um, I don't really want to give any spoilers to Vampire Academy, it follows a main girl that we see in, um, it's the later part of the series called Sydney. And she is at a school um, to protect some vampires. Um, she, there is, I think it's, there's like a hunt going on for this particular vampire because she is of royalty and a certain bloodline. Um, and it's about keeping her protected and then loads of killings and everything else and I can't even put it into words, things that are going on around her. Like I said, it's really hard to talk about it without giving spoilers, A, for the first one, and then for the other two books that I've read, because obviously I know more than what I did getting into it. There are some amazing characters in here. One of my favourite characters from the first one, which I will say, which isn't a spoiler, Adrian. I love Adrian so much, and he's in these books, and he just gives that comedic relief and he's so witty and I just love him as a character and there's so much going on and I feel really tense reading these books because there's so much action in them and I care about the characters so much. So the next one I've got to read is The Indigo Spell which I was going to pick up the other day but I did start a different series why um, I started From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout and if you want a book talk on that let me know. Um, the Fiery Heart, I think, is next. Then we've got Silver Shadows and finishing with The Ruby Circle. Um, I'm not reading the blurbs because I don't want to spoil myself, but that is a series. 
I'm not planning on, I would like to finish all four and I could do it, but I also do want to prolong it a little bit longer. If I can just read two, I'd be happy with reading two. Um, but yeah, it's just such an amazing series. And if you haven't read Vampire Academy, which are, these are the new ones. They're not the new ones. These are Vampire Academy, um, but with their republished, it's not gonna focus with their republished covers. If you can find them at your library or if you can find them in a charity shop or on your marketplace and stuff, I really recommend them. I don't know anyone that's read them and regretted it. So give them a go if you want like a really good like series that can just take you away from everything that's going on. And then finally, again, a book that's just representing an author for me is Jane Fallon. I absolutely love Jane Fallon. I've read not as many as I would like because she is an author, if you're a reader, and I can imagine you'll relate, I like to stagger some of my favourite author's books. For example, Page Toon, one of my all-time favourite authors and her books are incredible and they just touch a place in my heart that no author really ever has in like the romance, like adult romance genre. She's just incredible. And I've got all of her books on my shelf. Um, and I've only got three left that I haven't read and I'm saving them. Same for Jane Fallon. I've read, I think I've read five of her books. Has it got a list of her books? It hasn't got a list of her books. I think I've read five, uh, four or five. Um, I love her books so much and they're amazing. And I want to read another one this year, which is why I'm showing you some. This is My Sweet Revenge. I haven't read this one yet. Um, I read Strictly Between Us. Was it last year? Yeah, it was. It was before I gave birth to Florence. So before the shit hit the fan. I don't think I read one after that. Um, her books are fantastic. Her books are so funny and witty. And there's obviously like a love trope in there. And so much friendship and girl power. And they're just brilliant brilliant books again i don't know anyone that's read a jane fallon and thought what's all the hype about like so many people that read her books are like oh my god like how have i never read her before she is brilliant um she is the wife i think they're married of ricky gervais and she's just got that really like sarcastic wit to her writing style and it's really really good the least favourite of hers that I read was Getting Back at Matthew. I did like that book, um, but it wasn't a favourite. So just go into that, like, bear that in mind. So that wasn't a favourite of mine. I did absolutely love Strictly Between Us, which is the one that I read last year. Um, her release last year was Queen Bee. Apparently that's really good. And she's also bringing out a new one this year. I can't remember what it's called, but I will probably get it either for my birthday or for Christmas whenever it gets released. Um, so again, let me know if you want a Jane Fallon to be a book club pick, because I would quite happily do that with you all. And that is everything that I want to prioritise for the rest of the year. That's quite a lot. Will I be able to do it? That is quite a lot of books. And I also want to read things that I've got on my Kindle, um, books that haven't even been published yet. For example, the page two that comes out at the end of June, that'll be July's book club pick. So I, I wanna get that. Um, the Sally Rooney that hasn't come out yet. And so many other books that I've got on my list and my radar that I haven't shared with you today. <sighs> There's just not enough time for me. Right, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. It is so horrible and cold outside today. I've got my slippers on. I've got my joggers on. And it's just not nice. How are we in May? And I'm still having to wear a, like a thick coat and a scarf on the school run. I don't understand it. Like this time last year, I had an absolutely cracking tan and I am so pale. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up. Let me know what books you want to prioritise. Maybe I'll do like a, a review of this video and the books that I've shown at the end of the year. I don't know if that's interesting. 
Um, and once again, thank you for watching. I'm really glad that the select few of you that watch my book content really support it and really enjoy it. Um, I'm so happy and proud that I took the bit, the bit the bullet to do these videos because I just love them. I love doing them. Um, and it's sparked my love for YouTube again. So I'm very, very happy to be sitting here talking about books with you all. So I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.